Good morning, everybody, and welcome to St. Jude and St. Paul's at Home. My name is the Reverend James Hill. And my name is Anna, and I will be helping to lead this morning's service. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. As we continue in the season of Easter, we're thinking and we're reflecting about what does the resurrection mean in the life of the church community, not just the church community 2000 years ago, but how is resurrection happening even now? John Tasker is going to be reflecting on our gospel reading today, where we hear Jesus speaking to the disciples and specifically to Thomas, saying, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet still believe. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet still believe. Well, that's us. We're the people who weren't witnesses to the resurrection, and Jesus says that we are blessed today. A little later in the service, we're going to be hearing from one of the key workers that we have in our congregation. Her name is Sola, and she works in a GP surgery as a nurse. And she's going to be telling us a little bit about some of the challenges um, and some of the hopes that she has and what keeps her going during this pandemic. I'm now going to hand over to Anna, who's going to introduce uh, the kids' activity. So yesterday, we sent through some resources for families from Together at Home. And within those resources, there are some very good discussion questions for parents and carers and children to share with each other. There's also a lovely activity for families to do together, praying for each member of the family using a cutout of each other's hands. So linked to that, we thought it would be nice this morning uh, in our intercessions to use a similar idea. And so I'm going to invite you now, and this is not just for families, this is for all of us, both adults and children, in preparation for our intercessions, to cut out three hands like this out of paper. So perhaps in the song coming up, um, when there's a moment, and even if you want to press pause on our service this morning, you can go and get some paper and just simply cut out three hands. And then I would would invite you to label them very simply one NHS and key workers, the second hand family and friends and then the third hand could you label the world and then later on as we go through into sessions you'll be using these hands to help us and guide us in our prayer. Thank you. We're now going to hear from Chris who's going to lead us in our first hymn, How Great Thou Art. Good morning, everybody. Um, I hope you had a good Easter. Uh, my name's Chris, and I'm going to lead you through some songs this morning. Uh, and the first one is How Great Thou Art. Thank you. 
prepare to hear God's word and sing his praise. Let's confess our sins. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Risen Christ, for whom no door is locked, no entrance barred, open the doors of our hearts, that we may seek the good of others, and walk the joyful road of sacrifice and peace to the praise of God the Father. Amen. Chris is now going to lead us in worship. Hello everyone, um, I'm in the garden now, as you can see. Um, I'm gonna sing a couple more songs for you. The first is, There is a Higher Throne um which god has laid in my heart i guess because he's been talking to me a lot about the old testament sacrifice and how that um mirrors the new testament sacrifice of jesus and how that opens up um the way into heaven uh, for us and the second is uh we bow down which is a simple chorus so um yeah just sing along at home
This reading today is taken from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 30. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them to his hands and side. The disciples were overjoyed and when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nails marked in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand inside his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were with in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said, My Lord, my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and by believing you have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Well, there they were in lockdown, isolated together because of their fear of the virus. Well, I say together, most of them were all together in the same place. But one had abandoned the family 10 days ago, and another had an essential activity somewhere else. But the rest of them were in lockdown together because they were afraid of the virus the virus of persecution that was going to attack them. In the Together at Home resource for families, it's a great question for children to ask adults. Can you think of a time in your life when you were scared? What did you do to help yourself be brave? So, if you are a child, do ask an adult in your family after the service that good question. Suddenly, another person appeared to the disciples of Jesus, standing very close to them. He didn't wash his hands when he came in, like we do, but he showed them his hands, and his hands had holes in the middle. Peace be with you, he said. Peace be with you. Wow. They were overjoyed. They saw Jesus standing amongst them. They saw the nail holes in his hands and in the body. And they knew him. It was Jesus. Captain Tom Moore said, this week, as he finished his 100 laps of his garden. For all those people finding it difficult at the moment, the sun will shine on you again, and the clouds will go away. Mary Magdalene had been absolutely right. Jesus was alive, and they were filled with joy. I have just read the draft of a book called Pandemic Joy by a friend of mine from Nigeria who's a pastor. His vision is that in the midst of this 
coronavirus pandemic. Christians are so joyful that our great joy spills over into our cities and is contagious. I think the way that so many people have responded to Tom Moore has shown this in action. Amen. Peace be with you, said Jesus a second time. As the Father sent me, I am sending you. Then he breathed on them. How close was he? Two metres away? Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone their sins, they are forgiven. If you don't, they aren't. In their lockdown and isolation and fear of the virus of persecution, the disciples of Jesus were commissioned in the name of the Father who sent, in the name of the Son who had been sent and was now sending, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. They were commissioned with the I am name of God. I am sending you to set people free, to encourage them to let go and to make them clean again. One of the family was out at the time, but they caught up with him over Zoom later. Tim Wakeling took a a screenshot for us. They told him, we have seen the Lord. This is what Mary Magdalene had told them earlier. She had said to them, I have seen the Lord. But Thomas didn't believe them. I wonder why Thomas responded like that. Why do you think Thomas demanded proof? Can you share what you think in the YouTube chat or with someone at home? Why do you think Thomas demanded proof? Perhaps he thought it was fake news. Perhaps he withdrew into his pain and sadness. Whatever the reason, he had to see Jesus for himself. And a week later, he did. Rihanna has found a picture of that encounter between Thomas and Jesus for us. This picture is by William James Reed from New Zealand. It's called, Behold My Hands. I wonder what Thomas thought when Jesus came up and said, look at my hands, put your finger here. Perhaps he shivered at the very thought. However he had been feeling over Zoom, it was now enough for Thomas that he could see Jesus. And that led him to believe that Jesus was alive. For Thomas, Jesus being alive could only have one meaning, that Jesus was God. I wonder what our reaction is to Jesus being alive. What does it mean for us? Can you share again how you react in the YouTube chat or with someone else at home? What's your reaction to Jesus being alive? What does it mean for us? Jesus blesses those who believe without seeing him. That's us. 
We can read the story in the Bible. We can hear what others believe. Just as Jesus came to Thomas, so he will come to those of us today who seek him. We may not be able to see and touch him, but Jesus will make himself known in the way that helps each person believe. Amen. Here is a prayer from the Together at Home resources for us to say together. Please join in. Dear God, thank you for the story of Jesus visiting the disciples. Even though we may be like the disciples, locked indoors and feeling scared, Help us know the same joy that they found by coming close to you. Thank you for the task you gave the disciples and that you give to us to share the good news about Jesus' death and resurrection with others. We pray for all those in the world who are feeling scared and trapped that they would come to know your joy. Amen. Recently, I had a conversation with Sola, who's a member of St. Jude's congregation and also a key worker who works part time as a GP nurse in a number of surgeries in London. The surgery doors are locked, but through a screening process, the important work of a GP surgery continues. For example, Sola mentioned to me the importance of giving immunization shots to newborn babies and taking samples from others for early warning signs of cancer. So the work continues during this pandemic, but things have obviously changed. You'll join now our conversation as I ask her about some of the challenges that she's facing currently. What are the biggest challenges, would you say? Not all surgeries have the uh, right um, um, PPE. Um, no. the, not everybody. Some we have the full regalia that you, you, you know that you are very confident you are okay, you can carry on. Some is just the mask and the, and the gloves and the aprons. So sometimes we just manage with the aprons. We don't have the shoe covers, we don't have um, the gowns, you know. But one surgery I worked last, they had everything. So that was why I had a, a, a picture to show the, how we should really be dressing at work. But okay. one of the challenges, another challenge that I face is you know, we have this close relationship with patients because it's, it's GP surgery. It's not like us people, we are very close to our patient. We've known them for many years. And then we have like a one-to-one -one because they come into the consulting room, they're seeing me alone. So we, we are a bit close, but now to, to sort of um, do that um, social distancing is a bit difficult. Yeah. You, want to, you want to give a baby injection on the tie. There's no way you can put, <laughs> you can have a gap of um, two meters. There's no way no. you're very close to the baby. You know, you want, yeah, to, yeah. you want to do dressing for somebody on the leg, do the leg all side. You can't be six, uh, two feet. You can't even be two feet distance. <laughs> so, so that's one of the, one of the challenges. And yeah. then we, we are being extra careful even though the patient will screen them to make sure they don't have any symptoms. We don't know because not everybody will tell you the real truth. If they're not coughing yes. or sneezing, then we can't really know. They might have come in contact. So that's another, we're very, being very careful, extra careful. Yeah. So we're not sure who is who at the end of the day because no. they've not really been tested before they came in. So, yeah. so that's yeah. another challenge there. Yeah. And what keeps you going, uh, Sola, in this in this crisis? What what gives you hope? What how do you continue? There's there's new challenges. There's new ways of working. But um, yeah, what keeps you going in this time? Yeah, um, I'm quite aware that the government they are doing their very best, hmm. and because of the call that we've been called to be key workers, this is something I've done for decades. I'm always there for like emergencies for anything. I'm just open to see patients that uh, we have been trained. But the governments are doing their very best. They're trying to help everybody. So that gives me a lot of hope because they're pouring a lot of um, funds and doing everything 
to, to help everybody. Then with the NHS, a, a lot of the, they are providing a lot of this um, protective clothing all over the place. Mm. They are, so that's, they, know, they are aware of it. Then another thing that gives me hope and confidence is um, I'm a member of the RCN, the Royal College of Nursing. So they are very, very supportive. They update us all the time. They are very like fighting for the nurses, making sure mm. everything is in place. The nurses are well supported. So they are that body that are, they are doing that behind the screen for all nurses all over the place. So they will even tell you if you are, if you are going to a place, if they, they don't have enough protective uh, equipment, you can refuse to do the work okay. because they, they, they are really putting their feet yeah. down that you must protect our nurses and doctors and everybody because some nurses are dying. So they can't just push us there to say, oh, yeah. we'll go and die, they know nothing to use, you know? So they are very supportive. That one I'm very um, hopeful for, I'm grateful for that they are uh, trying their best to protect us. Yeah. So, uh, well, another thing that will give me hope is I've been through so many stages like that. When I was a student nurse, I worked in the infection disease hospital. Those days was tuberculosis and cholera, and we worked there. So I'm like, those days, that was like over 40 years. I, I did that. So, and I've gone through a lot of cases like that over the years. I worked with HIV patients. I worked with so many type of infection disease patients, but I'm still there, I'm still alive. So that gives me hope that I can carry on to do yeah. my little bit to help my, to help people that I need. And then yeah, another thing that helps me is my spiritual life. Like, you know, I pray a lot. So I pray, I depend on God for everything. If I go to work, I even pray for my patients before my, during my devotion. I pray for myself. I pray for everybody walking around this uh, coronavirus there. So that gives me a hope and give me, just settles me, like God is there all the time for us. Great, thank you very much, Sola. Thanks for joining us uh, today. And uh, you're, you're in our prayers. And uh, do, let, do let your colleagues know as well that uh, St. Jude and St. Paul's is praying for them this time. I would definitely. And a few broadcasts this, I, I would share it to them. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah. Okay, God bless. See Bye -bye. you later. God bless. Bye. God bless. Bye. At the beginning of our service this morning, we invited you to make three hands to help us with our intercessions today. Can I invite you now to have those hands with you as I begin to lead us in our prayers today? After Thomas saw Jesus's hands and sighed, he believed and he knew that Jesus had risen from the dead. Thomas responds with the words, my master, my God. In response to our own unseen, blessed belief, we begin our prayer this morning with those same words, my master, my God. Let us pray. Jesus, we thank you for your resurrection and that those scarred hands shown to Thomas were not only proof to him, but also testimony to us as those who have not seen. Jesus, on earth, your hands served, invited, instructed, held and healed. Thank you for the example that they are to us. Father God, made in your image, we invite you by your Holy Spirit to work through us. Guide our actions and inspire our words. Taking your three hands that you have perhaps drawn out or cut out, can I invite you to place your hand or hands, if you are a couple or family, on the hand labelled family and friends. Take a moment now to thank God for anyone known to you who has recovered in hospital or returned home. Then let us bring to God those known to us who are sick, whether from the coronavirus or another illness. And in this moment of silence, you might like to write their names on the hand. 
If a verse or image comes to mind for a particular person, can I invite you to write that also on the hand? Let us now place our hand or hands on the hand labelled NHS and key workers. We remember before God the serving hands, the skilled hands and the sacrificial hands of all those working in our local communities and hospitals. We pray for their safety and health as they bravely serve and care for those around them. And now in the silence, you might like to write down on that hand names of key workers known to you and perhaps a verse or image that comes to mind for a particular person. In the coming days, it might feel right to be in touch with one of those family members or friends and share what God perhaps has given you. It may be an encouragement to them at this time. Finally, place your hand or hands on the hand labelled the world. Let us take time to pray for countries throughout the world affected by the coronavirus and their leaders and governments. And let us also bring before God those communities most vulnerable due to poverty and the impact of war. And now in the silence, you might like to write down those countries and leaders which are particularly on your heart today. And perhaps particular prayer requests and bring them to our Lord and Saviour. Father God, we thank you for your presence with us always, even when we don't feel you close or choose not to draw close to you, you are there. Thank you that you meet us in our grief and sufferings, whether through the love of others or in hearing your voice of comfort. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray together. Our Father Amen. in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
about you. All about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it, but it's all about you. All about you, Jesus. The King of endless world, no one could express how much you deserve. As we begin this new week, let us remember together that to fully worship God is to follow Jesus in whatever we are called to do. And as children return tomorrow to school and homeschool, let us particularly remember parents, teachers and all those who serve in our schools. Thank you everyone for joining us this morning. And uh, especially thank you to Chris and Stuart who helped out with the music for Clara and Sola and for Rihanna and John as well. And actually a special thanks to everyone who gave us a hand during the intercessions. So this week, may you know the presence of the risen Christ speaking peace to your hearts in your homes and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.